all the wonderful things that host can be, be happy birthday with love. Love always, Sassing, Jess, Greg, Tiff, James, Maxi, Abby, Bubs, Scampy. Bubs? Bubs. It's just Bubs. Just still five years younger. <laughs> Bubs. <laughs> well, hello. How's it going? Welcome back, guys. It's been a long couple days, but we are here at home in Vegas. We arrived very late last night, or I guess technically it would be very early this morning. This is our first stop on our cross-country road trip to the other corner of the U.S. and back. Luckily, both of our families still live here. Our parents live on opposite sides of the city, so we usually drive back and forth and see them when we're here. So we did some relaxing, got some pool time in, and then we drove across town to my parents' house and celebrated my dad's birthday. So it is the end of the night. I am pretty tired. I probably should have wore a little makeup today. That would have been a good idea. And we are gonna get ready for bed and get a good night's sleep so we can start our big journey tomorrow all the way from here to Colorado where I actually went to college by the way. And there might be a little bit of storming when we get there. So we want to make sure that we are safe and careful and not driving too quickly, not in a big hurry. So I will see you guys in the morning when I'm at my very best said no one ever. Good night. Good morning. We are on our way outside of Vegas right now. We just got on the 15. Today we are driving through Utah and our way to Colorado in kind of the Breckenridge area in the mountains and we are taking the 15 to the 70 to the 70 and we've actually made this drive quite a few times so we've done this before but it's been a while we've only done it once I believe since I graduated from college your mom goes to college we haven't done it at all since you graduated we haven't wait but we did it oh we, we flew we flew so we haven't done this in how many years 12 years. 12 years. So we used to make this drive a lot when it was really treacherous weather and like we'd go home for Thanksgiving and Christmas and we have had situations where we've been like off the side, like cars are just going off the side of the road. A lot of the mountainous area, they don't even have rails like on the side of the road so you could plummet to your death. I don't know how they decided that and why they designed it that way. But luckily we've never had any really bad situations. We just a few times have gone off the road. We had to reverse <laughs> it out of where we were because there's more traction. And I had to push. And he got like almost frostbite in his finger. <laughs> we've had some adventures on this drive and it's been a long time. It'll be nice to kind of revisit it, but this time during the summer, we may hit some storms on the way, we'll see but should be fun. So an Arizona story that is maybe not worth telling, like many of my stories are, was I was with a couple classmates of mine and we were driving from Vegas back to Colorado. It was like after Christmas break or something. And I don't know how they didn't realize, but you drive through the corner of Arizona on this drive. And they were so convinced that Arizona was not a part of this drive, even though one of them at least had done it. And I was, I think, sitting in the back seat and I was telling them, like, you, we, you actually do drive through the corner of Arizona. And they were like, no, you don't. And so when we finally got to that little portion, you know, we were driving up to the Arizona sign, me being the sassafras that I am, I like pointed at the window, pointed at the sign, and it was like, Arizona! Just like that, pretty much. And they were pretty much like, okay, <laughs> you suck, you shut up the whole rest of the drive. So I probably did. They probably didn't tell me to shut up, they were probably very nice about it, but I cannot not be how I am. Papirinetak na tatikopi. 
Okay, so we just stopped in St. George to go to McDonald's to get breakfast and take it with us. And we had an incident. Oh, so I had a Karen moment and I'm not proud. Well, I feel like this is a completely justified thing to happen. I went to the bathroom and as I was drying my hands, an employee came out of another stall and just left the bathroom. She didn't wash her hands. Like, this is a food industry job. This is a restaurant and it's still a pandemic. Like, you can't not wash your hands ever, period. Like, that's not okay. You always need to wash your hands. Like, especially if you work at a restaurant, especially if a customer is in there with you and just witnessed you walk out the bathroom. So, I like couldn't help myself. I was so angry. So I went over to, I try to like, patiently wait until someone made eye contact with me and I was like I just saw like an employee come out of the bathroom and she didn't wash her hands I'm just letting you know and she was like okay that's pretty bad I'll tell the manager so that's what happened and like the, <laughs> the icing on the cake is that we didn't end up getting food there because breakfast was close was done so we just came in there and complained and left but moral of the story is like dude you guys you have to wash your hands that's not okay. It doesn't bring me joy to complain about people, but I feel like that's a situation where, like, that can't be happening. You know what I mean? So we're about 50 miles away from the 70 junction, and this used to feel like such a long time to get from Vegas to this point. But I think because we do so many trips from SoCal to Vegas, this feels like a breeze now. Of course, our very first stop for gas. It's pouring rain as we pull up, but luckily it's subsided a little bit now. But yeah, as, as James got out of the car, cause he was gonna go in and use the bathroom, we heard a giant boom, or you know, thunder, right? It sounded like it was right next to us. Like some of the loudest thunder I've ever heard. We wanna make sure that we have enough gas cause we remember that there's a long stretch between Beaver and past 70 where you don't have a whole lot of places to stop so good thing we did that but of course if we would have just waited about five minutes then it would have been not that much rain every single road trip I've ever been on has mostly been a short one and it's always been to like get from point A to point B had to get to school when we go from Long Beach to Vegas and back and forth none of that has ever felt leisurely you know and we went on a few vacations as kids we went to Yellowstone we went to you know I think the Grand Canyon and stuff and those trips were really fun but as an adult, I've never been on a leisurely road trip, certainly not one this long. And this just feels so different. We're going at a slow pace, we're taking our time, we're enjoying ourselves. Maybe I'm speaking too soon, but I was kind of hesitant to go on a really long road trip because I'm afraid I'm gonna get antsy in the car, I'm gonna get bored and anxious and wanna get out and stretch my legs and do things. And certainly we can get out and stretch our legs and take little breaks. But I am definitely enjoying this so far and it feels very weird to be driving to Colorado and through Colorado and it's for fun, like very strange. Definitely not used to doing this, but I'm definitely enjoying it so far. James' family and my family as kids kind of did the same, same sort of stuff where they didn't travel a whole lot. Um, they're originally from New Hampshire and they didn't venture too far outside of New Hampshire as kids. It's expensive to travel as families, you know, driving farther than a certain point so we didn't do it much either when we were kids so it's kind of nice to be able to check states off the list that we haven't been to and while there aren't a lot that we're doing on this trip there's definitely a few that we've never been to before and that should be fun I just learned last night talking to my dad I think there are a few states that I thought were going to be new 
on this trip, but technically I was one year old, I believe, when we drove from Virginia to Las Vegas, and then my family settled there for a long time, because my dad was in the military, so he moved around a lot, and that's where we ended up, ended up staying. I somehow missed living in some of the coolest places, because my brother was born in Hawaii, and then they lived in Colorado before they moved to Virginia and had me, and then we moved to Vegas, so I missed out on all of these really cool places, but it's totally fine. But as you can probably tell, I love being in places that are green and sort of like the polar opposite of Vegas. It's funny because when you grow up in such a dry place and you don't do a whole lot of exploring and seeing other things, you just have such a huge appreciation for places that are green and water and, you know, that sort of thing. So I just kind of have this innate thing where I'm like, the desert is boring and dry, it's literally Death Valley, nothing grows there, and James kind of has a different feeling about it because he grew up in such a green, beautiful place, so that he has an appreciation for both. He loves both. So anyways, it should be fun to drive across the country and drive through these climates that I've never really experienced before, and, uh, and yeah. So I think we looked it up, but this stretch coming up with this 100 miles of no service, no gas station, no stops, I think is the longest stretch in the continental US where that's the case. So I made sure to use the bathroom because I got a small bladder. So we have a bit of a situation here because apparently there's a mudslide somewhere in this region here. So we are taking this lovely detour coming all the way up and around to our motel and it's going to take an another six hours. But that's okay, that's why we left at about 7.30 a.m. this morning just in case. That's the nice thing about technology these days is that you can anticipate these kinds of things and figure out what to do to avoid a situation like this whereas you know 20 years ago or whatever you just would have showed up and been like oh there's a mudslide guess we gotta sit here and wait so at least we have that going for us right even though we've made this drive quite a few times we forget that you you know you have desert and then you have some green and then you have desert again before it stays green and it's nice and mountainous in Colorado and in my brain I just equated it to Everything is dry and desert in Utah, and then when you get to Colorado, then it's green, but that's not the case at all. It's funny how your memory works sometimes. So now we are taking our detour, which will take us to the 40 so we can avoid the mudslides. So we're gonna drive up through the mountains in this section and hopefully there'll be some pretty things to see because if I remember correctly, the section that we're missing is very pretty too. Good morning, good morning. What if I woke up like that every single day? Can you tell I was a musical theater major? All right, so it is morning, obviously. We had kind of a rough 
end of the night last night because that mudslide detour took about three hours or so. So we were really tired and cranky by the time we were done. And now we are in beautiful Dillon, Colorado, kind of close to Breckenridge. We are doing this little loop that is very scenic. And then we are going to make our way to Greeley, Colorado, which is where I went to college for musical theater. How appropriate. And then we are gonna make our way all the way to Omaha, Nebraska. Kind of expecting there won't be a whole lot to look at on that drive, but you never know. We've never done it before. So that's the plan for today. actually one of the kind of better musical theater programs and more affordable um, on kind of the whole western half of the US so that's why I went there and it has been a while since I have since I went to college and since we've been here and we're thinking we may not ever come back because I don't really know what opportunity would arise if we'd ever make our return to the small town of Greeley Colorado which smells like cows and is infamous for smelling like cows and I think you kind of get used to it a little bit when you've lived there for a while, but I'm sure upon our arrival, we will be grossed out yet again. So we are gonna have lunch at Kidoba, and fun fact is that I used to work at that Cold Stone right there. <laughs> Okay, so my dorm used to be right here. Now they have this nice, beautiful brick building in, the, in its place, and it used to be so crappy. McCowan, that was the name of it when I lived there, but now it's this nice building. Completely forgot about this. Okay, place. here we go. Here's my school, UNC. Wait, this looks... Why different. does this look different? <laughs> that looks updated. And the big bear's up here. Maybe I can zoom in so you can see him a little bit better. Where is he? There he is. Hello, Mr. Bear. So now we are headed to our old house we used to live in that I lived in for three years. James lived in it for most of that time as well. And it was a blue house. Let's see if it's still blue. It's right here on the corner. Oh my gosh, the trees are so big you can't even see it. That's it. So it actually looks much greener and kind of nicer now than it did when we were living there. I feel like the grass used to be really dead and stuff. Pretty much looks the same, the house itself it does anyway. So we actually lived in both the upstairs and the downstairs. We lived in the upstairs for two years and then moved down for my senior year, which is kind of funny. So we've basically lived in this entire house, but there's a basement. I think somebody lived in the basement and we like never saw them or talked to them or heard them. Very strange, kind of creepy. I have fond memories of waking up in our car being here and James needing to chunk it, as you would call, chunking the ice off of the car so that we could use it to go from one point to another. All right. Hello, house, and goodbye, house. 
may not ever see you again, but we had a good time here. I'm pretty sure this looked exactly the same when we were here. Music library. And here's Fraser Hall. Now we actually have a <laughs> key for a yeah, go around go ahead and go around the loop or something for fun. We actually have a practice room key <laughs> that we accidentally stole, which we should have brought and just brought back and said, sorry, we've had this for like 12 years. <laughs> ah, nostalgia. Fraser Hall. When they built this Chipotle across the street, it was like the biggest deal ever. People were like walking through the snow, waiting in the snow through the storm to get to Chipotle. Dang, Greeley got really hip. Look at all this. There's so much new stuff. That just seems so out of place. That looks like something that would be in California. And here is Crab Hall which was our dance, where our dance classes took place, and we would literally trudge through the snow at 7 a.m. across campus to do ballet at 7 a.m. because we were hardcore. Look at these nice dorms. Everybody lived in cool dorms except us. It's so funny seeing these different dorms, remembering my classmates that lived in, lived in these dorms. And then over here was where we would, somewhere in there is where we, where we would have the littler theater and would perform in there. And here's the other side of Fraser. that it didn't actually smell like cows at all. Has Greeley changed? What, what led to this? But that's an improvement and I'm not gonna complain about it. It is weird to see how many new buildings and things have developed since we've, you know, since we were last here and to see what things stay the same. And the school looks the same, you know, the house pretty much looks, looks the same except for the stuff in the yard, but it is weird, you know, when you haven't been someplace in a really long time and come back and I guess Greeley is a really uh, fast growing city and always has been so I was kind of surprised about the amount of people driving around and walking around stuff. It seemed really bustling to me and I don't really remember it quite being like that when we were here at school. So anyways, we are on our way to Omaha and if I see anything cool on the way, surely you will see it as well. made it safely to Omaha, Nebraska. Wasn't much to film along the way and there wasn't even a sign to welcome us to Nebraska. So we are missing a state already. I'm gonna continue to film every day of this trip as best as I can and next week should probably have a lot more packed in there for you. But that's gonna do it. Thanks so much for watching. As always, have a good weekend and I hope to see you next week.